Hello good people, it's Rob Lee. I'm going to do a three-part video series exposing some of the biggest lies by the churches and the merchants. I'm not going to be able to put it all in one video, at least not for now. Um, there were no talking snakes in the Garden of Eden, and Adam and Eve were not the first people on this earth. Therefore, all people did not originate from one man and one woman approximately 6,500 years ago. These are gr gross lies and misconceptions by believers and non-believers alike. I'm not going to preach you a sermon and what I believe is not taught by the charlatans and churches, the internet, scholars, and television and academia. And of course Google is going to censor this video as they do all my videos, but I'll have it forever and I'll put it where I choose and when I choose. In this video we're going to expose the first greatest lie by the snakes who walk among us. Now we must learn this before we can understand the other mysteries such as creation, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, the Flood, the Nephilim of Genesis 6, the people called Israel, the devil, and who is Jesus Christ really. We must understand these truths because they are the foundation of the Bible and they must be somewhat understood if we really want to understand who we are, who our creator is, our world, and our destiny. Now even people who have partially freed themselves from the lies of the beast system, they still drag around some of the grossest lies ever forced on mankind. Now, the most important one to me is the one that we're gonna talk about today. And exposing and unlocking this lie is the key to finally understanding your creator, your place in this world, and breaking free of the mental malfunction that has overtaken this world. A spiritual and mental malfunction results when folks reject obvious truth and hold on to obvious error. And what this does, this creates a devastating conflict in the spirit and, and the mind. Our mind is naturally built to work along channels of logic and faith. To be healthy and productive, the mind needs faith in what it's doing and a logical method which with to process the data. If you take one or both of these away from a mind, force feed it lies and BS and have it reject obvious truth consistently, it will simply malfunction. And this, this, when this happens, folks, the person is then vulnerable to all eyes. You see, now the deception is finally coming to the forefront of what is really the strong delusion of the Holy Scriptures. In churches today, brains are malfunctioning on a daily basis due to the lies fed to them consistently. Churchgoers possess minds and spirits that cannot comprehend the truth. They are defective. They are inca incapacitated, open to any form of deception that the devil can present to them. Sadly, and even more dangerous is the belief of these people that they have the truth on their side. The old saying is, is that you cannot convince a crazy person of their being crazy. If you could, then they wouldn't know they're crazy. The word rationalistic, using rationalism, being rational, using reason in matters of opinion, belief, or conduct. Should we be rational when studying God's word? Should we believe our God is irrational and expects us to believe nonsense about him? Of course not. But yet, this is what the world, this is what they want us to do. They want us to believe nonsense about him. Man's reasoning abilities may only be foolishness compared to the wisdom of God. Nonetheless, that does not mean that we should conclude that it is wrong for man to reason. Our knowledge, as we know, cannot be compared to our Father, and His ways are higher than our ways times infinity. Yet, are we supposed to be, to be complete idiots when understanding our Creator and our place in this world? Our Father tells us to study the Word and rightly divide the Word of truth. We are told to do this. By way of illustration, folks, I cannot swim as good as the fishes. However, my inability to swim as good as a fish does not make it a sin for me to swim as well as I can. By the same token, the inability to reason as well as God doesn't make it wrong for me to reason as well as I can. I want as much knowledge of my Creator as possible because I love Him and He loves me. The churches and the merchants want the elect ignorant of our Father and His Son. So now let's go ahead and let's expose the greatest and most evil lie ever taught by the churches and the the churches and the merchants who seek total domination over us and then in the next couple of videos we will knock down a lie number two three four five we'll just 
knock them down because you have to start at the very beginning. And this is the very beginning of the lies. Babylonian Christendom, folks, has told many lies and done much damage to the elect of this earth. And many naive folks have been entangled in the web of Babylonian Catholicism Christianity, which is not even remotely close to the truth of our father. They take the power away from your father and they drop it directly in the laps of the evil of this world. The reason this is done is because the vast majority of the so-called teachers of this world are created evil and they follow evil. They have no love for the father. They have no love for Jesus Christ or his children. They use trickery and deception. The definition of deception is this, the act of causing someone to accept as true or valid what is false or in, invalid. The most dangerous and evil eye these monsters have ever promoted has to do with the devil and the other angels that occupy this earth. They would have us believe that this being called the devil was first created as a high-ranking angel, then fell, lost his first estate because of his pride and beauty. He wanted to be like the Father. He started a rebellion in heaven among millions, if not tens of millions, maybe even more, of one-third of the other angels. There was a war in heaven. His, his, he and his band of angels lost. They were cast out to heaven. They were cast out of heaven, and woe unto the earth. Here they are. Now, I know this to be true. And I have showed you and have taught it beyond any question that we live among evil beings that walk among us in flesh form. However, the monsters in churches have never taught you the truth because, again, they take away the power from the Father. This is what they teach. They teach that the devil and all these angels had their own free will to turn against the Creator. However, this is our Father's creation, and are we really going to believe that these angels decided to get together of their own accord and overthrow the one in power. I mean, if this created being called the devil was created and then fell without your father's knowledge, attention, or control in an independent act of his own will, would the inhabitants of heaven or of the earth ever be safe at any time? How could you ever have faith in your father if he could not handle his own house? And this is what they have made the people of this world do. They have made the people doubt the creator. Now you see the game of these liars. They have taken the power of our father and gave it to the evil of this world. And it's done to deceive. Use your, use your minds, folks. Can you imagine your father not knowing when one of these other evil creations may of their own authority decide to become evil and destroy our father's plan? If you play this out, to the logical conclusion, this asinine fallacy, then who's to say that maybe Jesus may not rebel? Or how about the other angels in the future? So you're saying that we're going to go through all the hell of this life. We're going to go through all the trials and tribulations of this earth, and in the end, it might not be worth it because guess what? Another angel decided to rebel, and we're going to have to do it all over again. This is what they actually teach. And this is just one of many of the lies that we are going to talk about that they have, they have stolen the minds of so many because they follow these monsters. You see, according to the lunatics and the liars and the pulpits and the Babylonian agents on the internet, the Almighty Father is not actually in control of this world or even as his, his own throne. Churchgoers and pulpit pimps will say, we had to be ransomed back. Hold on. The Father actually had to buy me back because he lost me? What? I don't understand. Yes, I've sinned and I had to be forgiven, but ransomed? He lost me? This is what they actually teach. How in Hades can an omnipotent creator lose something if he's in total control? You see, the goal of these evil beings is to make our father seem weak and insignificant. And this goes double for us because if we being his children and the ones that follow, love, worship, and serve him, if he's weak, then we're doubly weak and insignificant. We are meaningless. Do you understand? We are taught that these angelic beings had free will and had the ability to be either loyal or to, to go against their creator. And all of a sudden they got together and they decided to, get, to wage war against the one who created them. Do you see any problems with this people? I've told you before, people, that the word of our Holy Father was written to his children and to his children only. It was written in such a way that only a select people 
would ever be able to understand its true meaning. And this has to do with Adam and Eve creation, uh, what happened in the Garden of Eden, Cain, Abel, the flood, the Nephil, the teachings of Jesus Christ and who Jesus Christ is. And I, I want to talk about all these things. I can't do it in this video, but we have been taught so many falsehoods that the Father is starting to show his children Here's the truth of things. We're starting to learn the truth because the Father promised us that he would teach us all things. So why did your Father create beings and have them become evil and declare war on him and his children? The, the answer, folks, is quite simple, although some people do not like hearing it and they do not want to accept it. Your Father doesn't care. Our Father created an adversary for himself. In fact, the word Satan means adversary. Our Father wanted us to have an adversary, you and I. If you were just starting to eat spiritual meat, this may be hard for you to accept. However, it is the truth, and the scriptures bear this out. I want you to recall a story in the Bible that is tantamount to understanding your Father, who you are, and his plan for us. Our people, who are called Israel, were in Egypt in bondage. The Pharaoh became afraid of our, uh, uh, he became afraid of our people and he became afraid of our father because he knew that we had the true creator as our father and it scared the hell out of him. Now hear me well, people. Your father had to make Pharaoh rebel against him so he could show his children how incredibly powerful he is and the love that he has for his children. You see, it is true. Your father has given these evil monsters much leash to work with. Because, again, their role is to be our adversary and his adversary because we are being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. We are a royal priesthood, as the scriptures say. We can never appreciate the good if it, not, if it not were contrasted with the bad. Had we not known darkness, we would never be able to appreciate the light. We must first be hungry to enjoy a good meal. You must be thirsty to enjoy water. Your father knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. He knows that there had to be pain and pleasure, light and darkness. We will learn, folks, and we will understand that we cannot make it without him. In fact, this is the crux of the entire lesson that we are learning. Your father is showing us that we cannot make it without him, period. Nothing can be accomplished without contrast. The ignorant and the enemies of our father will scoff and say our creator went to all that trouble just to show his love for his children i assure you people it wasn't that much trouble for him matthew eleven twenty five says at that time jesus answered and said i thank thee o father lord of heaven and earth because thou has hid these things from the wise and the prudent which means the scholars and the know-it-all and has and has revealed them unto babes well what does the word babe mean it means a child a child of who the child of the almighty father your father has showed this only to the children of his own children his children first peter 2 9 but ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light now the word generation there means people it is where we get the word genes, genetics, and genealogy. It is commonly read out of context. Now, it can mean a, a particular part in time, a generation of people, but it can also mean a nation, race, tongue, or tribe, and that's what it's talking about there. You'll see, folks, that it's all about us. We are what counts, and there is no, there is no alternative. No, this is not arrogant, and God forbid we should ever be arrogant because your father tells us over and over and over about humility and being humble because we do have we are sons and daughters but your father can take it right away from you we are loved more than we know and we are living amongst numerous families some are demonic some are the offspring of these created beings that fell and some of these created beings have been here for longer than we know and they were created some of them were created to be your adversary and I'm telling you the truth, folks, and in the next few videos, we're going to look at Adam and Eve, what really happened, and we'll look at Genesis 6, we will look at Cain's lineage, the flood, and who Jesus Christ really is. I appreciate you guys listening. My love to you all. May the Father bless you in the name of Jesus Christ.